And joining me is the Puget Sound Business Journal's Tech Flash editor, Todd Bishop. Welcome to About the Money again. Thank you. Real Networks has been a local fixture since 1994. Rob Glazer was founder and sort of visionary. What's the scuttlebutt on why he left as CEO and seemingly abruptly? Well, the company says it was voluntary. Um, there was a report out of Silicon Valley, out of the All Things D blog, that said that the board essentially forced Rob Glazer out. So you've got these two opposing stories. In the end, it was a announcement by the company, and, and Rob Glazer remains the company's chairman. So clearly, there's an ongoing relationship there. Real Networks was famous for, first for streaming audio and then for streaming video, but its leadership role seems to have sort of fallen off lately, and, and maybe that had something to do with his, uh, you know, his star waning. Certainly, that played a role. Digital, uh, Real Networks was a very early pioneer in digital media. And of course now you've seen all sorts of other forms of media come up. Um, social media and, and other things are really coming to the fore. And the company just was not in the middle of the tech zeitgeist like it was back in the <laughs> mid-1990s. So some of its latest ventures didn't do so well, like Rhapsody. Tell, tell our viewers what that is and how it's doing. So Rhapsody is a partnership between Real Networks and Viacom's MTV Networks. And it's a music subscription service. And the service has been seeing its subscriber base decline and Real Networks is looking into the possibility of reducing its role in that partnership, selling off part of its stake, mm. and that's really part of a larger strategic shakeup that could be coming very soon. For example, it could be selling its online gaming division and other parts too, right? That's right, and the games division has been looked at by the company for a spinoff for a while now uh, through its own IPO. That was withdrawn when the economy turned down, but that is something that could be coming down the road. Uh, them essentially letting go of that part of the business and taking some of the capital that comes in from the IPO. So it could be a smaller, leaner fighting machine, huh? <laughs> that is their that is their hope, and and we're looking for more signs of that coming up in the company's February 11th earnings report. Uh, Rob's uh, interim successor is uh, Robert Kimball, the chief counsel, former chief counsel. That's right. And, uh, how do you think he's going to do, and what does it signal if the board chooses him as the permanent successor? Well, he's been around the company for a long time, um, for about 11 years, and so in that way, it's some of business as usual if he does stick around. He's the interim CEO, the permanent president, and so he will be around in some form regardless. Um, the company has gone through a long time st strategic review um, and Kimball participated in that and so if he does stick around that means that the board is satisfied with the direction that the company is headed whatever it may be we, we actually don't know yet what the results of that review were mm -hmm. or maybe they need a, a more public you know face an icon like Steve Jobs yeah like Steve Jobs <laughs> I mean and that that for for uh, all of Rob Glazer's you know uh, you know faults and strengths he was a very public person and someone who was very recognizable in the tech yes. industry uh, Robert Kimball not the Steve Jobs of real networks by any means <laughs> right definitely not but you know taking that segue Steve Jobs recently made a big announcement in San Francisco about the Apple iPad. What do you think of that? Well, it's very interesting. Apple is essentially targeting that market, if there is one, between your smartphone and your notebook computer. And this is a Slate-style device that the company is hoping to see people use in their living rooms starting around $4.99. And the question really is whether there is a market between hmm. the phone and the computer. You have your doubts? Why? Well, you know... It's not nece really necessary. Um, Apple really has to show how this having the internet in your hands, as Steve Jobs says, will be compelling for folks. And especially at a time when people are cutting back on their spending, I think it's a real open question as to whether they're going to spend that much more money on a device like this. But nobody thought that the iPod would be the huge success that it is, or even the iPhone for that matter. That's very true. And Steve Jobs <laughs> and Apple have proven people like me and the industry wrong <laughs> for many years. Um, so. What, it's interesting, it's a different um, style than what Microsoft is doing. What, right. do you, what do you think is going on there? So the big difference is Microsoft still focuses primarily on the software, the, the heart of the computer, uh, whereas Apple is vertically integrated. It starts with the software, the applications, the hardware, and even in this new device, it's making the silicon, the, Microsoft, the, the, the microprocessor. So it's in control of the experience end to end. Mm. And it, it limits it in some ways because it, doesn't have as much variety, but on the other hand, uh, it's able to control the quality end to end. But maybe eventually, it's holding out the potential that then it could be both. You know, you could have all the the computer, the PC apps too. It, it is possible in some form down the road that Mac OS X applications could be 
uh, running on the iPad, but that is not what they announced initially. All right. In the last 30 seconds that we have, what about Steve Jobs and how, how do you think he's doing? Well, he did look relatively thin still. Um, of course, he had a liver transplant last year. Um, but for all intents and purposes, he's looking like a, a very strong leader of the company. All right. Well, we'll see how that's doing and how Real Networks is doing. Thank you very much, Todd Bishop. You're welcome. <sighs>